This video is all about backyard scale maple syrup production using a home-built reverse osmosis system. In this video, I make a new steel grate for the arch, cut fire brick to insulate the firebox, make refinements to the sap preheater coil, show how to get the correct settings on the RO, prepare the RO for storage, and I even evaluate if recirculation is worth doing on a 5x400 gallon per day membrane RO. It's about an hour long, so I put some chapters on it if you want to skip ahead and find a specific topic. Oh, and there's also a close visit by a wolf pack. Check it out. This grate is going to be a big upgrade. It is replacing two pieces of expanded steel that have served as an ash grate for the past several years. Last year when I ran the boil, lots of hot coals dropped through the expanded steel grate and into the ash tray. The bottom of the arch, the wood stove, easily reached over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The coals were so abundant that they spilled over the ash tray and it was no easy task removing them simply to make room for the ashtray to be reinserted. The rebar is left over from concrete projects and 100% salvaged. That's why there's two sizes. My only cost is the welding wire, welding gas, and my shop time. The tray should last decades, as re-rod has favorable properties for handling high heat. Hopefully it allows ashes to fall through, but keeps the coals above. We will see. Also, at this point in the project, I started to draft some sales pitches to the House Finance Committee. A fixture table for welding sure would be nice, especially as the lubricity of my knees begins to depart as the years pass. It was up to 450, dropping now. Yeah, I switched to a mask after a little while. Anyway, this turned out pretty good. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna win any awards, but I think this will be fine inside the fire box. Anyway, I burned a lot of wire. Just letting that cool down a bit. Like I was saying, the welds on here are nothing to brag about, but they should hold. And they're just gonna live inside the firebox of the maple stove. And that's our new ash grade. So a quick update it is February 11th. We have a ways to go before we tap. And uh, the sap holders are all put together. I uh, got the new ash grate welded up and installed. And um, check the RO and everything looks good to go there. So anyway, we'll check back in season. Dad, we found our Okay. Sixteen inches of ice on the pond, by the way. I want to see the underwater room. Good morning. This is the Thursday before we cook, and I have a little bit of maintenance to do on the stove. So yeah, let's get to it.
So there's some fire brick on that back wall. I'm going to remove that and that's where the preheater goes on the back. And then new this year is the grate. We're going to add some more fire brick. I have a diamond blade. I have some refractory bricks that need to be fit. Wow, that actually cuts <laughs> really fast. Yeah. Wow, that actually cut <clears throat> like there was nothing there. That cut really fast and it seems to fit nicely. The fire brick has been notched. It fits nicely with the rebar. It sits flat on the metal that should help it avoid cracking if anything rests on it, like a block of wood. A lot fewer ashes should fall down below. Both of these steps should help keep the heat under the pan in the firebox and hopefully out of the ash pan. Next, I need to remove some of this fire block the fire brick row is now lower. I should get better heat transfer to the preheating coil. One of the screw heads broke off. So I'm gonna try to get that out. Nope, I'm gonna have to drill it. It's all the Do you have a file? Quality shavings. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yay. These are stainless steel washer head machine screws. They will hold with a lot more um, tenacity than those sheet metal screws.
There we go. Perfect. Start cooking tomorrow. Shoot, that's backwards. A uh, important detail with a valve is to make sure <laughs> it opens the right way and not into the pan. Because you can't fix it when there's eight gallons of hot syrup in the pan. So we're gonna get this right the first time here. And now for the secret weapon. Guaranteed to double your boil and half your wood consumption. And then the last thing to do is just to put a few fire bricks in. And make sure our air goes where we want it to go. Okay. Okay, time to get the RO set up. Now, luckily, I made a set of directions last year. So these are also on my blog on the 2022 season summary. I think I will set up the entire system right away. These little cable keepers came later. It's just a dowel with a hole in it and some elastic. And these save a lot of headaches and make everything very organized. First thing I'll do is plumb these into the preheater and try and get some of the coil out. And these just plug in with some quick connects. I have two lines, one going to and one coming from the preheater. It does not matter which line is plugged in. These are both on the intake side. This is my main intake. This is a recirculation valve. So let's plug this in. There we go. And now this one will need to go to sap, or since I'm flushing, the water pails. On the RO, I have onboard storage In that storage, I have the sediment filter and also on the actual RO, I have a spot where the filter wrench is held on and this handy metal weight.
this line with the handy clip is the permeate. So this will be pure water or very close to pure water. This port on the manifold is going to be the concentrate. Okay, now we are all plumbed up. This is an inline TDS meter. It measures total dissolved solutes. And it is very handy with an RO. It's also cheap. And yes, I have spare batteries. There are several valves on this that allow me to seal off the membranes from the outside air allowing me to store the membranes in the containers or the canisters over winter in a cool basement. First, we're going to open this valve. That is the permeate outflow. On this side, this is the intake. This is the bypass valve. We'll leave that alone for now. This is the recirculation valve. We'll also leave that one alone. Actually, we'll open it just a little bit. Just in case there's anything in here, we'll flush that out. And then this right here is the needle valve that controls what ratio is concentrate and what ratio is permeate. We'll start with that opened all the way up. And on goes the pump. And the flush begins. I'm going to open the bypass valve to remove as much restriction as possible. And there it goes. Now I can hear it kick in. This is the permeate line. And this is the concentrate. This line So there we go. That number will go smaller as the flush gets closer to being done. As this bucket gets low, I'm just going to add some more water to it. <coughs> to make sure I get a good flush. Adding water to the bucket makes more sense, right? Otherwise, if I had to pull that out and put it in the other bucket, I'd introduce air into the line. The recirculation valve was open just a notch. I'm gonna close it now. And you can hear the pump working harder. Now the water is being flushed across the membranes instead of recirculated. And there is an immediate increase in the concentrate line outflow. And it looks like we're taking more out of the bucket faster. This is what we want for a good flush. No drips. That's a good start. Two thirty-eight. Five membranes, uh, looks like it will take a little while. I'm gonna get more water. It's 
it's also mud season. Two fourteen going down. I think with the tap water, we'll probably bottom out at about 80, 60 to 80. I didn't test it yet. Looks like it's stabilized around 215. It's been that way for the last five minutes or, in, or at least the last five gallons. So that means the flush has done its thing and I'm ready to move on to the sap. going to switch this over to a sap bucket and hit it. Okay, now that the preservative flush is done, we're going to shut the bypass valve. I'm going to leave the recirculate closed for now and we will Try to establish some pressure here. I'm going to put it at 80 psi right now and see how it goes. Concentration is already picking up. That means there is some sugars coming through. And that's another reason that little meter is so handy. I knew 215 was baseline, so when it started to get higher than that, there was sugar coming through the line. Gonna go inside and take a break for a little while, check back in about half an hour. We'll let the pan fill up. Okay. Time to get the fire going. Right now, the door isn't quite 800 degrees. Under 300. About 450 or so, 480. That does have fire brick. Two, wow, 266, not too bad. We'll find out how that is in a few hours though. On the preheater, now for the center. I want to see something. Oh yeah. You can definitely feel the difference. I'll have to measure that, the ins and outs. And I know you're wondering, what about the smokestack? Uh, 
All right. Well, that was pretty close. Jeez. That's a wolf pack. I know they sound like coyotes, but the howl has a lot more throat to it in person. They're probably about 200 to 300 yards away. These three 32 gallon barrels are pretty much empty. That one's empty, that one's pretty close, and this one is permeate, so water. Fire is just about out, it's 11.20 p.m. Take a look. And it looks like the rebar grate is doing its job. Not much down below other than ash. So yeah, pretty happy about that. There's about three inches in the pan right now, which is plenty. I might lose up to an inch overnight. So to empty that barrel, I'm gonna go to bypass. Pressure will drop from 130 down to about 85 or 80. And we should chew through the rest of this barrel pretty quick. And that will cool down the pan a bit too. Now I'm still in bypass mode, but I swatched, swapped the intake over to permeate. So now we're flushing the membranes. And I can watch this guy. The old way was to taste it and see what happened. When it tasted less sweet, it was time to stop. But this is a bit more accurate. So I'm just going to watch it for a little bit. Once it drops down a bit, we will discard any of the water that comes out of this because it will be simply purified. Now I can see it dropping 118, 116, 65, 64. Okay, 42. So now we're under one bricks. I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy like that. And we'll continue to flush until it gets down to about, I think about 10. We'll take a look in a minute or two. And I forgot, I'm supposed to close the recirculation valve when I do a flush. It's at eight, seven. Okay, that's good enough. Already starting to ice up. 
I brought the RO inside the cabin for the night. Those small lines really like to ice up. And if any ice gets into the membranes, well, then game over. I have had lines ice up in the past. I had to bring them inside and put them in the sink with hot water for a oh, good 10 minutes. So yeah, a little bit of portability, some wheels, bring it inside each night, no problems. Well, no northern lights last night. Well, I mean, I could see some really far off in the distance, but not like the night before. Anyway, let's get the fire going. This is my second year with the RO. Last year, I used three membranes, 400 gallon per day. This year, I have five. I have some questions. I wanna find out how certain settings work. I'm going to allow 10 minutes after setting the setting for it to equilibrate, and then take some readings. And I think this is gonna be interesting. For each test, I'm going to measure the output of the concentrate and the permeate, the time it takes to reach 500 milliliters. It appears I can't take a reading right now because there's too many bubbles in the liquid. I'll have to let things settle down for a bit and try to redo this. I'll probably go get breakfast now. The bubbles are gonna throw everything off because that will drastically change the density of the liquid. You can see it's foaming up as the bubbles rise to the top. It'll also mess up the outputs because 500 milliliters will actually be more like maybe 450. So the first test, running at the same pressure, 120 PSI, under these circumstances, had some interesting results. The recirculation was 0.2 times more concentrated and recovered 5% more water. However, it processed a total of 8.8 .8 gallons less per hour, outputting three gallons less permeate, 5.8 gallons less concentrate. And for actual gallons per hour produced, recirculation produced 11.5 gallons per hour of concentrate and 12.8 gallons per hour of permeate. 
This is really interesting because the recirculation seems to be a worse deal. It produces less along with everything, basically. The next test, I'm going to look at matching outputs. So I'll try to produce exactly the same amount, gallons per hour, of concentrate and see how it compares for recirculation versus non-recirculated. This was very interesting. This time I matched the output. So the concentrate was producing almost exactly the same volume per hour for recirculation versus standard. And what's interesting is that the standard was better. So the solution had a concentration factor of 0.3 greater on standard than recirculation and removed 1.5 gallons more per hour. So I don't know that recirculation is worth it. It's probably not. As far as efficiency goes, the percent recovery of water is 65.4% for recirculation, 68.5% for standard. So pretty close for the recovery percent, but yeah, another 1.5 gallons per hour, put that over a whole day, that could cut off a good hour or two of boiling. That was close. That was a dab of butter. I finally found the, uh, the one thermometer that's not digital. And you can see the temperature is cold. So the sap temp appears to be 35 degrees. And now we'll check on the uh, permeate all right the temperature is stabilized at 48 degrees while I wait for the concentrate to accumulate so we can measure the temperature here's another look at the preheater looks like about the same 48 degrees so that's consistent so right now we're pulling a consistent 13 degrees Fahrenheit running that preheater. And our last check, uh, exactly 20 gallons per hour. So running 20 gallons per hour, 13 degrees. That is a lot, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. There's some charts that show you how much more efficient RO is with warmer sap. Basically, it, it's quite a bit. I could run a test, but right now everything is going so smoothly, I really don't want to interrupt it. Um, plus, it would probably take about an hour for everything to equilibrate to get an accurate reading. 13 degrees being dumped, um, yeah, that's a lot. So, real quickly, something special about the way this is set up. It's set up to come on and off quickly. There is a mechanism right here that turns 90 degrees and it pops right off. If this sat on there for, ah, gosh, I don't know, a minute, maybe, maybe a few minutes, it could superheat and boil the sap in that line and cause all kinds of issues with the RO. So if I have to shut off the RO, I need to come over here quickly and pop this off. But all it is is just a quick turn. Like that, and it's off. There's a look at the bracket. 
put it back on because I want to get all that free energy I can. There we go. On and off quickly. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good, more wood. Current boil rate is 10.2 gallons per hour. Current RO, 9.4. I've been running at a deficit. I'm gonna to have to try to run the RO probably at about 12 gallons per hour concentrate for the next hour or two. Coming up on eight o'clock. And near the tail end of the tank. Tipped it just a little bit. This will round out about 380 gallons. You can see in there. Almost done for the night. The pan is extra deep. And there's some extra up top. That way I can put the RO away tonight and we can focus on finishing in the morning. Going to start the flush, so I transferred to a bucket of clean water, turn it on and open the bypass. You ended up really good. No, that's that's where I wanted it because we're gonna cook a little yet tonight, and then uh, tomorrow I give some time to get some fire going. Yeah. Yeah, because you got five left up in there, yeah. So the pump is flushing. I'm going to add fifteen grams of RO soap and go get about three and a half gallons of warm water. All right, I'm going to pack it up for the next two weeks. The preservative or RO soap is simply sodium hydroxide, food grade. There is 15 grams in this three and a half gallons of warm water, 80 degrees Fahrenheit about, just enough to dissolve everything. This has been flushed. The TDS meter is showing five parts per million, which is basically nothing. So I know that these have been flushed thoroughly. So now I'm gonna set the timer and run this for 15 minutes, both output and the intake in the same bucket, and that will circulate the preservative, soap, get this nice and clean. Okay, I just finished flushing for 10 minutes now with the RO soap, and I realized that I had not swapped out the pre-filter, so I swapped that out, and I'm hoping this time, the water doesn't look this brown after another 10 minutes. And that second solution is just about just another batch, same strength. All right, that is all for tonight. I will finish putting the RO away in the morning. There's one last step to do. Almost burned down for the night. Just using up the last of the coals. I kind of want to throw an aluminum can in there. Hmm. 
No, I'd better not. How many trees were tapped? One percent. One percent of what? The trees. The total trees. <laughs> I know, how many was it this year? 100 taps. Oh, is that less than last year? Actually, it might be 105. <laughs> I freaked Dad out earlier. I was like, oh yeah, it's not bad. It's actually cool down here. You can actually touch it down here without burning yourself. Before it was like 500 degrees. Ouch! Because all of the ash now stays up top. So like you can kind of see the ash pan in there. Yeah. You can actually see the ash pan. It's not covered in coals. Oh, because it's a better grate that yeah. you made with scrap pieces of... Re-rod. Re-rod. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I remember. And so far it has not self-destructed and turned into a pile of molten rubble like didn't people warn you that was going to happen or something? Yep. And some people are like, re-rod's the best. So, you know, law of averages. <laughs> are you burning maple? Yep. That make it smell extra nice too? It smells good. We're also powering it with nuclear fusion. Solar power. Solar power. Yeah, we're environmentally friendly. Oh, I see, because of the yeah. cabin power. We're using entirely renewable resources from start mm -hmm. to finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells a little bit like mm. marshmallows, though. I mean, it's good. Mm. You must be wow. getting some better marshmallows. Mm. The maple mm. mallows. Oh. That would be a delicious confection. But I could do that. Good morning. I'm going to put the RO to bed now. Let's open all the valves. I have two gallons of permeate. And I'm going to flush the system for about two minutes. And then that's it. It's been two minutes. I'm letting the pressure drop. Once there is no more pressure in the system, we'll seal it up. There we go. Permeate, concentrate, and intake lines are all closed. This is now a sealed system. It has purified water and RO soap, sodium hydroxide. Perfectly preserved for a week or two until I come back and do another batch or until next year if need be. While I wait for the crew to wake up and get fed so we can finish today, I thought I'd take a look at the cooker. I am exceptionally happy with the new fire grate and fire brick. I didn't pull any ashes out this morning I simply swished them around through they fell through the grate pretty complete combustion with this setup see if we can see the ash pan just ashes this year man last year that thing was heaped with coals you could barely pull the drawer out Exactly four inches. Each inch is 4.9 gallons. Four times four, 16. Four times nine, 36. That's quite a bit. 19.6, almost 20 gallons right now. Plus some in the preheater pan.
feels like camping weather. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get this a little higher maybe? Or is that right? That is not gonna fit the half gallons or maybe even the quartz Well, to you fill. could slide this out though. Yeah. You mean the bucket higher? Yeah. Yeah, I think the bucket should be a little higher. Okay. It'll be easier to fill if it's a little higher. Last year when we finished it, I wrote it down. Because the temperature was 290. We brought it to 58 bricks at 218. That was using a hydrometer. What's the boiling point? Then we killed the fire and it syrup? came up another half uh, bricks. 58 bricks. So you want to get to 58.5? 58.5. But if you go a little high, then you get more crystallizing, right? Yes. I don't know. I just know last year we ended at 218. And yeah, it was because like, I it think was the helpful. water, because I probably boiled water, and it probably boiled at 211. Okay. Yeah, might as well check in multiple oh. ways. That one's like, you know, like, yeah. And now where you've got that, you got that. That's right. If one breaks, you got a backup for the backup all the time, and yep. you got three things. I definitely always believe in that. Mm -hmm. These are the same. Yeah, good. So that's good. Do you want to go check yeah, boil, go boil water. water with that one? Yeah. Cool. I'm getting a little foam. I'm going to add a, just a tiny bit of butter. All right, there we go. Story, what's it boil at? The water boiled at 209. 209? Right around 209, so we should be... 216? Yeah, about 216. Okay. So we should check it. Oh, it's, it'll ling yeah, it's lingering around here for a while. Well, I dumped the rest of the preheater pan oh, in. Oh, that's why. So yeah, it would have dropped. Yeah, it was like another <laughs> gallon or two. So we should check I it now and see how that compares to... Put a drop of butter in there because it was starting to foam. That's why it looks like it does. Mm. Yep. You put butter? Why? What do you want? I wouldn't do butter because of dairy allergies. I don't know. Like, now I can't give this to my brother. That's all right. He's <laughs> nanny. Fuck away from boiling syrup. No, it sure changed no. quick, though. Now, with the, with the air completely off, it's just a rolling boil for the whole pan. That's weird how it hits that stage. Mm -hmm. Because before, when we were running high heat, you only get, like, a few pockets. But now it's the whole mm -hmm. thing. <clears throat> So we're at, what, 2.15? Yeah. Okay. Just about. Yeah, if it suddenly goes to 2.17, let me know. Oh, no. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, it's dropping when you're scooping out of there. Yeah. A little bit. It's scared. Don't boil your... Don't boil your fingers. So the hot bricks right now is like 46, 46 and a half. Mm -hmm. So. 57, yeah. Ooh, hot, hot pants, hot pants, hot pants. Hot pants, hot pants. Yeah, it's hot. What is the hot brick? Oh, What's the thing? Mm, are you a dinosaur claw? 48 and a half. Mm. 51. Mm -hmm. Eight. We're at 53 for hot. So this is right around 62. Okay. There's not like a real well-defined line though, like I, I thought there would be, unless there's a focus knob. Hang on. 54, I looked at the wrong scale before. Jump back down. 55 for the hot. So 57, one more to go. It's at 58. Then you should take it off. So. Do the fire. Kay. Do the thing. We got half of bricks to. Uh, Felix, Felix, get out of the way. Daddy might need to scoop some burning wood out of there. Come on. 
Go over by Grandma and Grandpa, please. Okay. Go over by Grandma and Grampy right now, please. Thank you. Well, there's not much left in there. Six pints, four quarts. Okay, we'll make sure. Those first. Do half gallon. Then. Wow, it's a beautiful day. Okay. That's good. Let's go. That should take care of it. <coughs> Hey, the side of this thing is hot. Do you want me to shut the other thing down? Uh, Dad's watching it, right? No. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Fill this one and then move? Yeah. Or, okay. yeah. I think so. This is a big one. The jug, the half gallons. Okay. You don't like those because it's made in Wisconsin. Yeah. That's why <laughs> we went with these. But we've got caps for those if you ever need more. Scratch it off. <laughs> so. Probably not that big a deal, but like if I. Yeah. I don't know how we got an extra round in that, so. Oh, <coughs> fancy. Is this how you did it last year? Yep. <laughs> if you want to hold it, you can, but. Nope. There we go. Is that the end of it? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, you got pretty much. I need another cap. Felix, you want to grab me a cap, bud? Is there a half gallon? I don't know if there's a half gallon. Uh, those aren't going to be enough, but I don't know if there's enough for a half gallon. Well, any of the sediment's oh, going to be yeah. in this bottom part because the spigot is up off the bottom. So at this point, we want to mark this as like the last draw. Maybe I'll just mark. So. Oh, we got another yeah, quart. Yeah. yeah. Anything left? Yeah, it's all sedimenty though, but let's we'll keep that for ourselves. Okay. That's all. I mean, it marked the end of a batch of previous years, so that it was probably more had more sediment. Oh, okay. And did you? This is Here it comes. Sure. Oh, that was the first batch from 2022. 2022 dash one. That was the first yeah. first boil. You can see where we yeah. jacked uh, it up. Yeah, we'll try that. And then we use some shims to empty the pan all the way. Yeah. And there's our filter cloth. This will probably do her. I didn't, I'm pretty sure I didn't spill any when I was doing that. Um, <laughs> huh. You know, if you're going to complain about the job, maybe you should be the one still doing the job. That one might be a different cap. Could be. That it one looks was different, a different than shape. the other ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can we pour off the top, maybe? Just pour it in. Maybe we got it now. Let's see. This is all sediment anyway, but. Yeah. We'll have to use that one first. It'll taste good. We'll mark it. Okay. Put it in the fridge. Well, it, can we use one of those other? So, what's our total then? Ten and a half. Ten about, and a half? Just, yeah, about ten and a half. Okay. Basically, ten and a half. But if you overfill the jars, it's probably. Eleven? It's probably at least 11. Okay. Maybe close to 12, depending on how much overfill there is in each We one. could weigh a gallon because we know how much a gallon's supposed to weigh and weigh an empty thing and we could figure out. Yeah. Some do we stuff have a like gallon? I don't know. I don't think we have any empty gallons. We can do that at home. We have better scales. Yeah. Don't have Take your picture. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the whole, that's, that's all the ash the whole thing. Fine, I will. So. It's better than last year. We've never done this before. No.
Want to take the bricks on this? See how much sugar's in it? Uh. <laughs> Looks delicious. Well, thank you for watching, hanging us, hanging out with us while we make 11 gallons of maple syrup here in the UP at our cabin. I will have some stuff in the description with some handy documents and references that I use. And that is all. Thanks, guys. Not that cranky.